Hello again. I'm going to show you now how you can achieve a pair animation behavior. So this is the normal warp. But if I hit one of my FPs, which are not included in the example scene, um, you will see that I yeah, trigger these paired animations on my character and on the target that I'm facing. So no matter where I am, the animation looks flawless. And this is due to the motion warp. Let's close this up. So this one is a brand new project. There's nothing fancy in here. Uh, this is all you have, the example scene. And we should first of all start with importing the pair animations. For that, you can go into the asset store. I have this bundle pre-installed. This includes root motion animations, uh, which have a partner in them. So you can also find them by looking for finishers. So all these ones you can see here are all individual paired animations that you can use. You can also check out the publisher of the asset I just showed you. They do really good animations. I'm a big fan of them. They include these paired animations. I'll go with the Ghost Samurai bundle and actually open up in my package manager. Import. So if I click on the animations inside of the animations folder here, I am a big fan of this one. So the ambush one, where you just goes behind the target and stabs it. And pair animations have two animations with the same keyframes. So if you trigger them at the same time, they look like they work together. The receiver animation for this one is actually the ambushed one. This is what you see in game, or this is what you just saw in the sample I just showed you. So we need this one and this one. I'll just drag and drop these two inside of my top asset folder. And now we can continue by creating our first paired warp animation. I'll just call this one uh, ambush one. In here, I need a reference to the ambush clip. So the one from the aggressor. Then a target object. So this is again from our player, the actual import mesh. If I go to the armature mesh here and click the armature mesh, this is where it lays. So this is the one that we need. And if I go back to the assets here, click the ambush, go to the character, you can just drag it in here. Next up, we're looking for the start and the end frame of the warp. So if we click on the animation, we can actually, yeah, see the movement, which is actually pretty minimal. Yeah, it starts actually around yeah, it starts around frame zero and ends around frame four. So start frame is zero and frame is four. The rotation percentage should be super low here because if you're facing a opposite direction and you want to warp towards the target, you then want to face it before the warp ends. So yeah, I can put it to one or to actually zero percent. Next up, the paired clip passiva is the paired animation the ones that we want to feed into our enemy so that he plays it correctly. And finally, the pair partner Y position of offset. Usually the enemies, they look directly at the player. But for this one, we have a ambush. So we want to hit them from behind. So they should turn first. So in here, I just um, change it up to 180 and click the pre-compute button. If I now go to my player, I can add a warp input mapping so I can trigger the animation that we just created, drag and drop in the ambush and just, for example, trigger it with F1. If I now go into the game, hit play, you can see if I face a target, the ambush actually works, but it looks quite clunky. This is because we're kind of far away from the target when we are trying to ambush it. So this is around one unit. And this is due to we haven't set the end distance to a target properly. So this is currently laying on one. We can just change to point four. Let's hit play. And you now see the animation looks flawless. And if you're asking yourself, why does this work? So this is simply because I have the enemies pre-set up. 
so they all have their own animator on them. If I open up the animator, you can see they have a animation pair victim with an empty pair animation receiver. When the enemy is getting attacked with a paired animation, the player notifies the enemy, hey, this is the clip you should play and this is the direction you should face. So it simply overrides the empty pair animation receiver clip on our animator and just fills in the animation clip that we want it to perform. We can look at this in runtime. So I'll just drag it to the right, click on this enemy, for example, here. If I now hit play, you can see the idle animation is playing. And if I hit the F1 key and pause real quick, you can see the animation pair victim animation state is triggered. So it is currently performing. Um, let's actually dock it here again and look at the inspector. Inside here, we have the empty pair animation receiver. So this didn't change at all. But if we click on the moving enemy and look at the animator, this is overwritten in runtime by an animator override controller. Yeah, all this does is, as I explained, simply overrides this one animation. So the entire clip looks fluent.